everyone. I hope my grade one friends are having fun doing their math at home. I'm going to be going over a little lesson with you. Uh, you're going, you've been working with some adding, so I'm just going to go over, remind you of a few things that we've covered in class. I have a friend here who misses all of you very much, and he's really excited to watch the lesson as well. So Teach Me Teddy is here, and we're going to be talking about finding a missing add end in an addition sentence. So in class, we talked about in an adding sentence, the parts are called add end plus add end equals the sum, which is also called the total. So the two numbers in the addition question are called add ends, and this number that gives us a total is called the sum. So on your question, on your pages, you'll see lots of questions where there's a missing add end. Normally, we are fine trying to find the sum. Now you're doing a little bit of when you get older, they call this algebra. We're trying to find a number that's missing from the question. So we need to find out in this example, what other add end goes with three to make five. So three plus something equals five. I'm going to start by using my number line to help me. So I know that if I have three, that's going to take me one, two more jumps to get to five. So I know that my answer here is going to be two. Now, if, you, if you're not using a number line, and perhaps when the numbers start getting bigger, you may have to use other strategies that we've learned in class. So hundreds, a hundreds chart gives you more numbers, up to 100, but we also know how to just use our hands by punching out. So if we grab that three in our hand and punch out three and do four, five, we will see that we need two more to get to five. And that's an even better strategy to use than our number line and our hundreds chart because we always have our hand with us and we'll always be able to use that strategy. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is if you see questions that have the missing add end first in the number sentence. We know by working with different number sentences and adding sentences that if we have the same add ends but in a different order, they still give us the same sum. So we know that when we're adding, the order of the add ends does not matter. So even though it's the first number that's missing this time, all we have to do is grab that, the add end that we know in our hand, three, and then punch out four, five, and we'll get two again. Okay, so I'm going to do an example of, we'll get a little higher in our numbers this time. So say we have 12 plus something equals 17. So I could use a number line or a hundreds chart and count up. That would be great if I actually wanted to see my numbers and that could be very helpful. So some of you may want to stick with a number line or a hundreds chart and start on that 12 and do your jumps and see how many jumps it would take to get to 17. Or we can use our punching out 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and we know that that missing add end is five. I'll, we'll do a little, an example of even higher number. This time I'm going to have the first add end missing. Something plus 33 equals 36. Again, I'm going to use my same strategy. So I'm going to grab that add end that I know in my hand and I'm going to count up to find out what my second add end is. 33, 34, 35, 36. And I just, I went up three on my fingers. So three plus 33 equals 36. So working on punching out and counting up or using a number line and a hundreds chart to do jumps to find missing add ends.